Hey everyone and welcome back. So excited to continue the series on GraphQL. Uh, everyone is probably already familiar with you, Eve, I hope. <laughs> well, nice to see you in either case. Nice. To yes, see you. <laughs> I know. And you know, if you haven't been watching this entire time, uh, definitely go back and check out all the other videos prior to this. Um, it's been definitely educational. Uh, for those of you who don't know Eve, you should definitely follow her on Twitter. You can see her Twitter handle right there or Moon Highway. Um, Eve, you do just like amazing trainings. You have amazing books. You like just basically do all the amazing things and I'm jealous of your life because <laughs> it's like chill and fun, right? Um, Fairly chill. Very fun, I would say. Yeah, for the most yeah. part. So yeah, I'm lucky to get to do this stuff for I sure. I know. I'm going to go ahead and share your screen again, and then we will get into resolving GraphQL entities. Awesome. So I just wanted to take a second to show the repo for the longer format version of this course. So yes. all of our student materials are open sourced in our Moon Highway repo. So if you ever want to take a look at that stuff, not everything has to be for money. Uh, you can always check <laughs> that stuff out. Um, there's different branches for different steps. So we're kind of coming up on the end of step two, I guess. And um, if you want to take that through to the very end, we go through reviews and all sorts of stuff. So that's a longer format course, but the core of what we're talking about with Federation is really what we're talking about uh, today together, which is how do we connect these different data types so that we can access everything across our different, uh, across our different GraphQL microservices? How do we connect data, all that kind of stuff? So we created this user entity. We know it's an entity because we have this at key directive. It's telling us that this is something that we can connect across services, perform lookups, all those types of things. So what we want to do next is we want to take a look at how we connect back to our users from our color service. So this is all about the color service here. Um, if we take a look at our index file, we're going to make some adjustments here to our color. So I guess before we really get to the schema part of this, I want to take a look at the data. So pretend this is our <laughs> pretend this is our database, right? We're taking a look at our database. We have the ID field, the title field, the value field, and the created field. But not currently represented in our schema is this field called created by. So we want to add to our field, we want to add to our project rather, we want to extend this from our schema. So in order to perform this lookup, we're gonna need to grab the email address, but we wanna use this to actually look this up in our accounts database. So back to our index here, we're going to take a look at the color type. So remember, every time we're using this language here, the schema definition language, we're defining our API's types. So we're trying to perf uh, we're basically trying to map out this kind of blueprint of all of our types and how they are interrelated. So if I have a field in our color type called created by that returns a user. We don't have the user details inside of this schema, nor should we really. If we're creating GraphQL microservices, those should all be in their own schema. So what I can do to connect these is I need to do this. I'm going to say extend type user. And we're extending the user type in this schema so that we can perform the lookup again on this side based on these fields. So we're looking this up. We're going to say that the email is the field we want to look up at, use as the lookup, I should say. And then we'll say at external, which is saying this is part of another schema. So go find it there and look that up. So what's cool about this is this is just a reference to a separate schema. But instead of just returning a single field from the user, which would be their email address, we're going to use their email address to go over to the account service to look it up in the accounts database and return the whole thing. Oh, you're seeing all these passwords. 
That's okay. That's <laughs> just a joke. Um, but <laughs> unless but, you test them, <laughs> unless you test them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's what that looks like here. So let me give that a save. I'm going to, it looks like that's restarting. We'll open up our local host 4002. And we should see at this point, again, if you haven't seen this Apollo GraphQL sandbox, it's a really cool query builder. Um, back in my day, we had to look all this stuff up on our own. And now um, <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can build it up by just clicking on those plus icons. So this will add all the fields that I need. We're going to search for these colors and check it out. We're able to perform that lookup based on the user type. So we're making that connection based on those different uh, fields. Now, the other thing I want to show you, so let's make sure that this is running. We have 4002. We have 4001. I'm going to stop it and restart it again just because been burned before. And so <laughs> then I will look at the gateway. Remember the gateway is where it's serving up all of our data to us. So if I head over to localhost 4000, we should see if we put together another query for say accounts, um, that's going to pull back any details about those accounts. We got that part. But interestingly enough, we should be able to also query all colors and all colors gives us the title. And we also see the created by field here. Here's the fun part though, because we're on the gateway, because we've set up that relationship between our two data types, our color and our users, we should be able to grab all of the fields from that. And that should make that work. So what we're seeing here is that we need to take one more step with this. So the final step that we need to take, let's get this going. You know that I look at notes when I'm teaching, so I need to find those. That's important. <laughs> Very important. You mean I don't just memorize everything I'm typing? This is true. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our query plan here. And what we should see, let's go back to localhost 4002. We should, so this is our, we've swapped out this gateway here. Oh, 4002 is our color, so perfect. We can use our query builder. So this is showing us all of these different entities. And basically what this is showing us is these are all of the possible types. So right now our color isn't um, an entity, but our user is. This is the only one that's letting us perform that lookup. So I can send that query as I expect to. I can return information about our user type, even though I'm on that color service. So this is really exciting because we're able to query everything on the subgraph, but we're also able to query everything on the gateway. And all of that is just made possible by Apollo Federation. There are other tools for creating these GraphQL microservices. Some companies build their own, some use Apollo, some use other tools, but the ideas are all the same. Put together a list of all of your microservices, make that data accessible in one place so that every consumer can go grab it from the gateway and grab it from one single spot so you don't get all lost in finding out like where all that data is. It's always in the same place. Amazing. Well, that's really cool. I mean, I think that sh definitely shows like the power of GraphQL. And I think you've summarized it really well, like this idea of just t different teams working together, you know, being able to kind of isolate yourself while not being isolated, being able to bring everything together um, via GraphQL. Uh, hopefully people see the value of it and start doing it. I mean, I kind of want to do it on smaller projects just like for fun. <laughs> yeah. And that's something that is kind of interesting too, where, um, and this is something I've heard some of the Apollo folks talk about is mm -hmm. it used to be that 
a bunch of teams would choose to kind of roll out GraphQL without Apollo Federation just as a way to get started. Mm -hmm. But you can actually get started with a gateway in front of a single endpoint just mm -hmm, to set mm -hmm. yourself up for later when you might want yes. to scale things out. So yeah. um, I would highly recommend checking out the docs Apollo just released Federation 2, which mm -hmm. the syntax and the tooling is a little different than before we went through uh, the Federation 2 syntax for things. But I would say that, yeah, you don't have to hesitate to use this. It's not like a <laughs> five yeah, years into GraphQL thing. Yeah. You might as well get started here. And then once you're ready to make different microservices, you'll be set up better for success. So, yeah, that is very, you know, I, I always laugh because uh, I remember when I was first learning development, uh, I was like, okay, I need all the things, I need to get everything set up. Like, oh, one line of code, got to write a test for it. You know, just like, I love the, the like thinking about what you're going to be doing in the future and building for that from the very beginning versus like, you know, just um, kind of like, oh, I don't need it yet. I'm just gonna, whatever. I don't know. I, I like the big and the like, you know, I'm about to build this gigantic thing. So I should get ready. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And I think you, um, if you start to think about your graph in this way, then yeah. as you roll it out with the people who are learning GraphQL for the first time, then they won't yeah. be completely overwhelmed by the idea of a unified graph. There's all these vocabulary words. Last time we yeah. talked, we talked about that. Um, it's very super funny. Graph. Yeah, super graph, subgraph. And it's like, yeah, just learn those from the start. And then yeah. you're in, you're doing yeah. it. So yeah. why hesitate? Do it today. <laughs> So for um, teams who are looking for this, I assume they can just go to moonhighway.com like if they want the sort of like deeper, longer version. Yes, of course. You can always talk to us about that. Um, there's great federation resources on Apollo's site too and other places to learn and get started. So um, yeah, official training, you can always come to Moon Highway, but there's lots of great resources out there for the site too. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hopefully everybody enjoyed learning a little bit about GraphQL in this series and, you know, just kind of understanding all the amazing things that can happen um, and how powerful it is. And I, I really do hope everybody starts. Uh, I like super graph the best, you know? So too. Yeah. That's like my favorite. So hopefully everybody creates like their own super graph. Like if you're using GraphQL and you don't have a super graph in your project, like they're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if not just to be able to say super graph all the time, you know, it's a very yeah. fun word. Let's not hesitate. I literally want to go to a GraphQL conference and just talk about the super graph. All day, every day. Make a cape, a super graph. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. I'm there. Cool. <laughs> well, you know, for everybody interested, again, definitely check out more videos on our YouTube. There are so many different little mini series that you can learn and uh, about. There's also GraphQL Contributor Days, which is uh, recorded and you can watch it and just see all the amazing people again who are contributing to GraphQL kind of talk about some of the hard problems and the future of GraphQL. And then, of course, State of GraphQL is another thing. So. Definitely check those out and uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. See ya.